Hi, welcome to the Paper Snob. This is Tara. I am participating in a new to me Facebook community called Paper Crafting YouTubers. I found out about it from my friends Christine and Kristen, or Scrap It On The Fly as you know her on YouTube. I went ahead and joined and we do a themed hop each month of the year for February we are doing Galentine's Day. I didn't realize that this was an unofficial official holiday until recently I looked it up and Galentine's Day is February 13th. I do not have any photos of me hanging out with girls on the 13th of February because typically that's the day my husband and I go out for Valentine's Day because we like to beat the crowds and so if I have any photos of February 13th it is actually of me and my husband. So I chose a set of photos of me and one of my bestest friends, Ryan. She lives in Idaho and when this photo was taken, I lived in Virginia. We are a military family and we move around a lot. We just completed our 14th move in July of 2022. So I chose these this set of photos to create this layout for this hop and I have pulled out this Paige Evans Go the Scenic Route paper pad. I have torn out some papers that I think that I might use. I thought I might take this piece of pattern paper and do some fussy cutting of those flowers. They're kind of big though so we'll see how that goes. I also pulled out the set of um, butterfly f um, pattern paper to fussy cut and a second um, floral print as well. These photos here are printed from Groovebook and I apologize for the glare from my lighting. It is winter time, I'm having trouble with light and when I have a glossy piece a piece of anything on my desk space, it has that lovely little glare. Anyway, these photos are terrible quality. I got Groove Books for a little bit over a year and they weren't the greatest, so I will be reprinting these photos in a smaller format because I decided I wanted to do a single page layout rather than a two page layout, which I would need to do with the amount of photos that I pulled for this hop. So this set of photos was taken on my birthday in 2015. I had flown up to Idaho to see Ryan and I spent three or four days with her and on my birthday we went out to dinner and we went to a local restaurant in her area and just had a good time giggling and laughing and enjoying one another. We had so much fun. We always have so much fun when we get to spend time together. Now I have decided at this point that I am not going to be doing a two page layout but I'm gonna to have to definitely reprint those photos. So here you can see I pulled out that piece of butterfly pattern paper and I fussy cut some butterflies out of it. I think I might use this piece of pattern paper, maybe the hearts, I might cut some hearts out of it. I don't know, we'll see. It. Um, they're kind of not what I'm looking for, so I may just put them back. There's also a second patterned paper that I fussy cut all of the flowers out of. And those are the flowers that I'm going to end up using. So I'm gonna create a very small mixed media background. I am going to use my new Tim Holtz Oxide Spray and I'm gonna create two red borders on the top or actually it's on the, it'll end up being on the left and right side of my paper. Just for fun, I'm gonna pan over to my kitty who is watching. He's always watching.
I ended up swapping out the blue pattern paper for this blue pattern paper because I decided the other one was just going to be a little bit too busy. So I cut that at 8 by 12 and I'm going to cut two strips out of this yellow stripe. They're, they are going to be 3 quarters of an inch by 12 for both pieces. I'm also going to cut out this other pattern paper. I'm not quite sure what you call this. Chevrons, wonky stripes, I don't know. I cut two half inch, or no, two one inch strips, one by 12 inch strips out of that pattern paper as well. And I'm going to layer those up on my white cardstock that I put the mixed media on. Yes, I know that a lot of the ink is going to get covered up. That is why I chose to only put it on the edges because I didn't want to waste a whole bunch of ink by inking the whole white background. So I'm just going to go ahead and adhere these pieces that I have cut down for you. I did decide um, to layer them up a little bit. These white strips are going to end up on the edge and then I'm going to layer the yellow stripe on the edge of the 8 by 12 inch piece of pattern paper. So I decided that I was going to go ahead and do some hand stitching on this layout. This is kind of one of my signature moves. I know that there are other scrapbookers out there who hand stitch on their layouts. And I will tell you that if you go through my albums, you will see that I started hand stitching probably way back in 2006 or 2007 and you will see it throughout many of my older albums there are times when I hand stitch more and I do it a lot more often and then there I will go months and I won't hand stitch at all I'm currently in let's just hand stitch all of the things phase so going to put some hand stitching on here I really enjoy this and I've had a couple of people's people mention that they don't know how to hand stitch and so I thought I would just go ahead and I would poke the holes and do at least one side on camera for you. I am not measuring these holes. I never measure the holes for um, this stitch. This is going to be just a simple back stitch and I just kind of eyeball the placement of my holes. It is important for you to pre-puncture your paper to make the stitching easier. I mean, yes, you can absolutely poke the holes as you go, but I just find it faster to just go ahead and do this part first, and then I can just, you know, thread my needle and go. Now that my holes are all punched, I'm going to go ahead and thread my needle. I am going to knot my thread. I know that some people don't knot their thread when they hand stitch on a layout. I do. You can choose to adhere the thread to the back of your layout with washi tape if you like. I just knot it. Nobody's going to see the back of that layout once it's in a page protector and in my album, so I have no qualms about using a knot and to be honest with you when I embroidered quilt tops I knotted my thread instead of wrapping it like most people do for other needle type work. This is um, just a really easy back stitch and I'm hoping that although I have sped it up that you can still kind of see what I'm doing. You choose the um, the the hole that's closest to the end 
and you wrap it around and then you choose the hole behind it and then you come back up to the same hole that you started with and you just go back and forth. This is called a back stitch. Um, sometimes you can have a little bit of trouble with the thread knotting. It didn't do that on camera this time, but I have had where the thread has knotted on the front side and I just cut it and then that's when I will actually end up using washi tape because I'll bring the thread back through to the back and then it'll be too short to knot so I will actually just use washi tape to fix where it had knotted. That way I don't have to undo the entire um, row that I just stitched. But as I said, I didn't have any issues with knotting while on camera today. I have had quite a bit of practice with hand stitching. While I was pregnant, I spent many, many months on bed rest with each of my five children. With the older three, it was 12 to 14 weeks each. With the last two, I was on bed rest for eight months with Seth and seven and a half months with Emily. And so I spent a lot of time in bed embroidering. And so I got pretty proficient at this stitch, as well as a couple of other stitches that I don't use in my scrapbooking. But so if you wonder why I'm pretty good at this, that is actually the reason. There's lots and lots of pr practice because of the time I spent in bed trying to um, get my pregnancies to term. I just wanted to give you an idea of how to backstitch on a layout. So I'm gonna tie off my thread here and then I will take it off camera to finish. So I've went ahead and matted my photos off camera. I did end up reprinting them, as I mentioned, in a smaller size. Five of the six photos I did not have the digital file for. They were iPhone photos. I didn't have them. I only have the one of us together, and that one I just reprinted. But the other five I had to scan and then print in, in three by four size. And that's okay. They, they printed out fairly nice, and I was actually even able to edit them a little bit to make them lighter. So that our faces show up a little bit better. So as you saw, I had them laid out in a artsy way on that black mat and I'm trying to get that on here. It's not gonna work. They just don't fit. So first I take off one photo and I thought, well, I'm gonna go ahead and try to do it with just five. And so I bring in my title, which I cut with my Cameo out of pattern paper from the Go the Scene or Grout paper pad. Um, the title is really large. There was a reason for that, and so I'm not wanting to recut that title. I don't want to waste it. I don't think I have any more photos that I could use it for, and I don't want to waste it, so I'm going to have to pull out that bottom photo and set it aside as well because it's just not going to work. I am so frustrated with this layout at this point. I just kind of set that those photos and that title down and I'm gonna mull on it while I build the rest of my title. My title is gonna say, Won't You Be My Galentine? And of course, that's just a play on your typical Valentine's Day phrase. I thought it was cute and it really goes along with mine and Ryan's friendship. We are such good buddies. We don't see each other every day. In fact, it's been several years now since I've seen her in person, but I guarantee if she walked through my door right now, we would hug each other's necks, we would cry, we would start scrapbooking, and it would be like we had just seen each other yesterday. And that's the beautiful thing about our friendship. And I love being able to share her with you because she is an amazing person. I don't know if you see what I'm doing wrong there, but you're supposed to be building those words backwards to make this work. And I'm not building that word backwards and I have to take it off the foam tape and start again, which is what you're seeing me do here. 
Luckily, the adhesive on the back of these letters is old, and I would have to glue them down with liquid adhesive anyway if I wasn't putting them on foam tape, so they pull off the foam tape without tearing or ripping. So as I finish that last word, I've made the decision to pull that fifth photo. And now I'm going to move those photos down and start again with a different plan. Those, that row of photos ends up on the bottom and my title ends up in the middle. And this is where the layout starts going together well for me. I am quite thrilled with the direction it's going now and I'm gonna just move right along and start putting the title down on there. I'm not adhering anything just yet. My background, of course, is adhered because I've hand stitched, but the photos and the title and the embellishments that you see me lay down, I am not going to adhere on camera. I will do that off camera and then I'll bring it in at the end with some close ups and you'll be able to see what I did. I'm going to bring in the journaling that I pre-printed and popped up on foam tape and I'm going to lay it out in order on where it's going to end up on my layout. As I've already mentioned, I'm going to do all of the gluing off camera. I'm just going to give you an idea of where things are going to end up on my page. I'm going to use these fussy cut flowers that I fussy cut from one of the pattern papers here. They do have an awful lot of um, leaves on them and so I end up trimming off several of the leaves on each piece of the flowers because there were just too many and they ended up covering my face in one of the places and it was just kind of weird. I'm also going to bring in um, the butterflies that I fussy cut from another pattern paper and then these cute little Maya Road vintage trinket. There are metal roses. They're really, really pretty. I've had them forever, probably since 2011 or 2012 when Maya Road shut down. I also have some chipboard and some felt from an Allie Edwards story kit. I want to thank you for stopping by my channel today and watching my video and seeing me be frustrated on camera. I hope that you will check out my description below where I have a list of all of the other hoppers playing along. There's some really talented people in this group and I really hope that you check out their videos as well to see what my other buddies are doing. Here is my finished layout. I hope that you have a great day. If you liked my video, please click the thumbs up button and if you are not a subscriber, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Have a great day. Bye.